are hit by promotion. Because today we will learn how to look like true fearless daredevil. Today we are going to skydive! <coughs> True. Jumping out from an airplane is actually not that easy to film. Well, except you are Tom Cruise. Or Jenna Reeves and Patrick Swayze. Or did they maybe not really jump out of an airplane? Hmm. Okay. But still not the easiest setup for most of us. So. When falling from the sky, two things happen. First, gravity takes over. So you get pushed down and your hair upwards, which is why they try to fake this with this giant fan. But again, we don't have this. And there's a super easy trick to do this kind of shots. Upside down. Because upside down flipped again looks like you are falling. And once you understood that principle, you can do a lot with it. So the second thing is a bit more tricky. The wind blowing in your face, shirt and so on. Yes, you could use an air compressor to do that, but that is indeed very risky. And if you ask me, I wouldn't do it in person because so much can possibly go wrong. Okay, so let's also fake this in post production. And well, let's jump right into this. Here's the clip I have filmed with a super easy setup. Now we need a background for that. And there are a few ways to do it. Of course, you can search for fitting footage online hey, or create it on your own. And there are again two ways here. First, Google Earth Studio. It's free and basically Google Maps in 3D. Type in the location. Let's choose New York, somewhere near Central Park. Now go up with the camera, set a keyframe and at the end of your timeline, move the camera down. Simply render this out. And just as a bonus here, you can render this in 360 degree. So in After Effects, apply the CC environment effect to this at a camera and now you can orbit around your falling scene. So that is some crazy workflow. And if you also have a 3D character, you can add it and you already have a super convincing shot. Uh, um, okay, I think I lost track somewhere. Ah, yeah, back. Back in Google Studio, we can simply render out the image sequence. And the higher the resolution, the better the maps will be that Google is using. So even if it is just Full HD, let's render it in 4K and we get a drastically better result. So I also tried out the Unreal Engine to render a background for me. But that could be a bit frustrating if you are completely new to the Unreal Engine. So here are a few tips. Install Unreal, yes, for free. Now also download the Matrix City, also for free and load it. And both of this can take up a long time and I'm talking about hours here. So if you do it for the first time as the file sizes are huge. So up to 100 gigabyte for just one project. But in here it's the same as you're used to. Create a camera and with only two keyframes animate it downwards and simply render this out. And for some crazy reason I could not get the actors or cars to be shown in my rendering. So if any one of you can help out here, I will give away a crazy gift if you solve that issue. Okay, now let's bring background and foreground together and we are slowly getting somewhere. Only thing missing is, well, some interaction and yeah, some extra spice that I will show you at the end. Again, we need some wind that is displacing our fabric, our shirt, shorts, and maybe even our skin in our face. And we can do that with a turbulent displace effect. But before we use that, let's isolate the parts we want to have wind on. And I did that with the Rolo brush tool. So to get that tool, you have to be in layer mode and to be in layer mode, you have to double click on your footage. Now with the tool, paint on parts that you want to have. And when you paint while holding down Alt, you can remove parts. And for more detail, you can use the refine edge tool. And when you're happy with your selection, simply click on freeze and After Effects will calculate all missing frames based on your current selection. 
So you could also be smart and wear a shirt in a specific color and a different color for the shorts and so on. So you could also get away with a color key. But hey, I made that mistake, so you don't have to. Now, let's have some fun with this. As mentioned, we apply the turbulent displace effect to the layer and with the amount and size you can define your wrinkles. And when animating the evolution, you get the wind speed. And if you need more detail in your wrinkles, you can crank up the complexity. Okay, so far so good, but most important is the offset, because now we can push the wind from below to the top and this really makes the difference. You can also add the effect to an adjustment layer and then animate a mask on parts that you want to be affected. For example, my cheeks. Oh, my cheeks here. Okay, now we are really close to a final result. So just a few more compositing tips out of my trick box. You could blend a little bit of the atmosphere onto the green screen clip. So duplicate your background and blur it so you only have color and no detail. Now use your footage as an alpha mat, which leaves you with only the color wherever I'm flying or falling. But we only want the color to cast on me. So simply change the blending mode, well you guess it, to color. And with the transparency you can now define how much you want the effect. So in general, if your subject is backlit, you have less detail in it. So you can go down with the contrast as well as the whites. So you almost only see the silhouette. Silhouette, 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 silhouette. Silhouette. Okay, I could go on with tips here, but let's just give you like one or two more. First is some hint of speed. For driving shots, for example, it makes total sense to have something passing by in the front so you get a sense of speed. And same here, but subtle, really subtle. You may know that I'm a big fan of action VFX and their footage. And while searching through their library, I found that the vehicle dust trails really work perfect for clouds passing by. So maybe let's create a completely new shot for that as example. My opening shot. So actually this is just a picture of me lying on the floor. I animated my hands and legs with the puppet tool and the background is just a top shot, maybe this time from from Paris. Okay, and now let's add the vehicle dust trails and in that perspective you can really see what this is doing to your shot. And obviously I'm going a bit over the top with this, but I hope you get the point. Some extra details are always helpful. Okay, if you don't know Action VFX, you should definitely go on their page and click through their assets. I bet there is something for you as well. And hey, if you want to purchase something, simply use the link in the video description. The price will be the same, but you will also support my channel with that. And hey, every once in a while I do some free giveaways of their stuff. So subscribing really makes sense here. And the last tip to bring all of this closer together is a uh, Cam, oops, shake. Hmm. Just thinking, if you write me a comment on how you would use the upside down filming trick for one of your shots, I will give you an extra tip at the end of this video. Okay, where was I? The cam shake, right. So, did you know that you also have your transform settings as a separate effect? So just apply it on an adjustment layer on top and with a simple wiggle expression on the transform you get a pretty convincing cam shake. So just don't overdo it. And the good thing about using it as an effect, you can now also scale everything up a little bit to compensate for the wiggle. Okay, I hope you all have written some comments here. So here's the last tip. Interactive lighting with a glow effect. The trick here is to use a threshold 
so you get a lot of bright values. Now bring up the radius a lot, like really, really a lot and go down with the intensity. Now the sky and sunlight and everything gives you a really nice haze and diffused look and brings all of this well, closer together. And with that, we will also finish this tutorial for today. I really hope you learned how to think outside the box when shooting your footage and I'm really curious what you will come up with. And now I wish you a lot of fun upside down in After Effects. Super.